Oh, amazing. Da -da. Oh, it worked just as I started yeah. pressing record. And I didn't do anything. Um, I, I d completely disobeyed the instructions from um, Skype. But anyway. Uh, I mean, um, this is sort of fitting, you not being so great with technology, perhaps, and running a bookshop. <laughs> I think I'm okay with technology on the whole, um, but I increasingly could, just can't be bothered with it. Uh, you know, the, the more complex and difficult it gets, the, the less inclined I am to use it. So, um, uh, I, yeah, it's, it's not the... It's not that I don't that I have a problem with it. It's more that I just don't have the time to work out new things. Um, or You're the... busy. <laughs> I mean, like you've got a pretty busy life right now, haven't you? I have. I've got a two and a half year old child, and um, we've got another one on the way. So. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. Well done. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, we haven't really told very many people, so it's. Uh, but yeah, it's it's quite demanding. Yeah, and I saw on your bookshop Facebook page the other day, this is a bit of a tangent, but I thought it was really interesting that your daughter saw a ghost. Yeah, there's a, the whole ghost thing, I'm I'm a total skeptic. I think it's, I just don't believe in them. Um, yeah, I'm uh, the same. But then I know lots of really intelligent people who do. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe there is something there that I, I just, I'm too stupid to see, but um, yeah, all the sightings of uh, the ghost in the bookshop have all been in, in the same place. Um, and the other day, our daughter just walked past, she was walking on the landing and just pointed and said, ghost, ghost, um, at exactly the place where everyone else has claimed to have seen a ghost. And so, did you use it as an opportunity to to get some more information? Did you ask her a whole bunch of questions about it or anything? No, she was too busy demanding <laughs> to watch Peppa Pig, so um, uh, we she just lost interest. But she, she did say "ghost, ghost" and pointed at the the spooky bit of the house. It is pretty spooky, isn't it? Because she, it she is, can't it does kind of, to know. It sends a little shiver down your spine, um, but uh, I remain sceptical. Yeah, it's probably, if we're going to be boring about it, it's probably just the lighting aspect. That's of what I reckon, like a something. shadow or something. Um, but that's not fun. So since I last saw you in 2018, um, quite a lot's happened for yourself and in the world. And uh, my first question is, how has your writing evolved since your first book? Or has it? <laughs> It has actually, I think, considerably because I'm trying to do, at the moment I've got a deadline for another book, which is another year of diaries. Um, and I'm struggling. Uh, it's, uh, I, th I think the things I noticed in the, the year that the third book is, which is 2016, are completely different from the things that I would write about now. So in 2016, I was my the diary that I've I'm now having to rewrite is it's not stark but it's it's a bit bare there's not much there apart from facts whereas when I'm updating my diary now which I do every day uh, I kind of it's almost closer to the finished product so I don't think it really needs much in the way of a rewrite whereas the 2016 one, which I'm doing now, is it needs a lot of work um, to get it into a kind of readable shape. Um, and there are things that I know that I'm missing that uh, I'm going to have to not create artificially, but mm. um, you know, you need a kind of narrative arc. You need a yeah. something that carries you right the way through it, and there's just nothing there. So I'm having to go back and work out remember what was happening that year and and kind of thread that weave that through the fabric of the story so do you write more completely now because um you know it's in your best interest to save you time etc that's exactly why i do it um and also i you know i even though i don't have that much time now because of having a two and a half year old it's um yeah it, in a way it's it's 
to prevent my life being more complicated in the future, just get it all down and get it right first time. And then when it comes to the rewrites, you, it's just a question of tweaking it. Whereas now with the rewrite of 2016, it's it's much more of a, a whole restructuring yeah. rather than just you know, changing personal pronouns and you know, sure. adding the adjective. Something I was wondering is, um, since your first book came out, obviously now people, when they come into the bookshop, are aware that you're looking for material. Has that ever been a thing that people kind of are purposefully a bit more of a caricature or or just have you have you got so more I, obvious fans or anything? What's changed? No, I, I think in a way it's sort of what I really like is, I mean, it's really flattering when people come in and say that they've read one of the books or all of the books or whatever. Um, and it, it massages my ego enormously. But um, I quite like it when people have haven't read any of them and haven't even got a clue that I'm yeah quite often I get people come to the counter and I've got a pile of them copies of my books on the counter and someone will pick one up and sort of read the blurb on the back and look at me and say do you know the guy who wrote this um <laughs> and I'm yeah I really like that kind of stuff um and a lot of people who have read the books come in and say tell me that they've read the books and say we're not going to say anything stupid because we don't want to be in your next book um so it's kind of a mix you know people who haven't read any of the books give me the best material because they just yeah. don't know um they're being authentic yeah they're not they're not yeah exactly they're not sort of hiding anything or putting on a, a you know a mask whatever they're there although everyone's putting on a mask at the moment but a different sort of mask um yeah. but yeah it's it's interesting seeing and it has the books have actually definitely brought people to the area um which is uh, for me uh, that's a really really good thing um because like everybody benefits you know every, well everybody in you know sort of self-catering or hospitality or whatever people need somewhere to stay it's not a place you can really visit for a day yeah you know you can't well people do I suppose drive from Glasgow and Edinburgh and drive back in a day but it's a bit of a slog so it's much easier to stay the night have something to eat and... I think um I mean you're well it's hard to tell to what extent you're jokefully cynical about it people but like what's never doubted is that you just you genuinely love the area. And I think that's why on a local level, the book has been so successful because it's not in any way actually bitter. It's it's clearly just a joke. <laughs> it is, yeah. Um, but it's, I think it's, uh, I mean, I do love the area. It's, I couldn't imagine ever living anywhere else. Um, and I have lived in other places and here I am back where I was born. Um, uh, but yeah, I think the the kind of the cynicism is is kind of a bit laid on. But I mean, I there are very few things that, that aren't that, that that are made up. Nearly everything actually happened. And okay, sometimes I maybe over egg it and you know for effect. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that one of the things I said at the start of the first book is that nearly all my customers are really, really decent, really friendly, really nice. But the ones that you remember and the ones that give you the material are, are the ones that aren't nice and that aren't friendly and that aren't intelligent. Um, and they're the ones that that's where, for me, the interesting stuff is. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and I, I suppose one of the main reasons why you would like the majority of your customers is because uh, just by the fact that they're in a physical bookshop means that they must share a lot of your values. Exactly. There's something, we've got something in common and mo the moment they step through the door. Um, not all of them, actually, but most of them you think, OK, you're interested in books or not even necessarily interested in books, but there's something that some passion that inspires you, that drives you, that makes you want to learn. Um, so yeah, on the whole, it's uh, 
the the kind of people that I, I would you'd find yourself being on some level friends with. Have you noticed that? Has there been any change in your writing style since um, you had a child? Um, obviously, from the practical perspective, yes. But also, has it kind of um, has it made you a bit more in love with the world? Uh, no, actually, I mean, <laughs> any change in my writing style has been that whenever Freya, my daughter, uh, if I'm in the middle of writing something, she just loves getting on the laptop or the computer and just yeah, of course. So I suddenly, end up with a a sentence that starts something like it was a cold, frosty morning and the, there was ice on the window, and then it goes x x y y z. P P P Q exclamation mark exclamation mark um because like she gets, password code yeah. yeah so um in that respect but no I don't think so I think it's uh I mean I do refer to in the current diary um the one that I write every day uh you know I, I talk about my family um so I don't know whether or not anyone will be interested but we'll see We'll find uh, out, but I assume so. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, yesterday, uh, that is, this isn't particularly funny, but, um, uh, well, it kind of is and it isn't. Um, Lena, my wife's cat, died. So uh, we went, put it in a cardboard box, took it out into the garden with Freya, our daughter. Um, and Freya obviously doesn't understand the concept of death. Yeah. But she kept stroking it, and it was like, Completely, <laughs> clearly dead. Yeah. <laughs> um, she kept stroking it and going, "Don't worry, cat. Don't worry." Oh. And she tried to give it an apple. Um, anyway, so she went off and played in the sandpit, and I um, dug a hole and uh, buried it. And Freya ran back and uh, saw the empty box um, and just said, "Cat ran away." <laughs> and, um, the cat clearly hadn't run away. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But, but that's anyway, her understanding of the situation. But, yeah, she's she's got no other sort of points of reference for things like that. So um Is she waiting for him to come back? Uh I think she's kind of forgotten already. Um Perfect. Um, that's that sort yeah. of thing. Well, yeah, I mean uh, I think uh she that's her first experience of death. So yeah. uh you can't expect her to really understand it straight away. Yeah, it's a pretty, I mean, we're all, as adults, we're all <coughs> a, bit, a bit confused by it. So I'll, I'll yeah. <coughs> it, do you read to her a lot? I'm guessing you do. Um, well, at the moment, I, for some reason, she doesn't particularly like me. Um, it's all mummy, mummy, mummy. So um, between us, we do read to her a lot, yeah. Uh, and she likes being read to. So, uh which is good. What are you looking forward to reading to, with her most? Um, well, that's a good question, actually. I don't know. I think it's not really up to us. It's She's very single-minded, so it, she chooses what she wants us to read to her, um, which is a good thing, I think, in a way. Um, but then I suppose we choose what she gets to choose from. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think maybe, um, what's she reading at the moment? I don't know. I'm looking forward to when she can read for herself, um, introducing her to books that I liked um, when I was a child. Um, I wasn't a great reader when I was a child. I'm, I'm much, much more enthusiastic now. Um, but yeah, I think she's going to be, a, Lena, my wife, is a really keen reader. So, I mean, I don't know anybody that reads as much as she does. Uh, so I have a feeling Freya is going to be quite... An, an avid an, reader. Yeah. And when you write, because obviously, like, you're now writing about your wife and your daughter, as well as um, members of the public, how much are you aware that these people will be reading it and you write it accordingly? Or do you try to not let that get in the way too much? Because obviously you know that your daughter's going to read this when she grows up. Yeah. Uh, but you I, wouldn't want that to affect the funny stuff. No. Um, I'm quite sensitive about what I write about my family. Um, 
and I, you know, I wouldn't write anything that I wouldn't want them to be happy with. Uh, and actually, on the whole, it's the same with customers. I try, I mean, I don't make stuff up. I, I try and just observe um, and note down what what people say and do. Uh, so, you know, I think that if people aren't happy with what I've written about them, then really it's a reflection on their own behavior um, rather than anything else. You know, I, I'm, I'm just writing down what I see. Uh, yeah. So, um, I, yeah, and I think I, I like to feel like I hold a mirror up to people's behavior. And if they don't like it, then change their behavior. I mean, nobody's perfect, uh, least of all me. Um, so, you know, we're, we all have our imperfections and I think it's, you know, if you don't, if someone points them out and you don't like it, then you kind of, it's a bit, a bit of an exercise in self-awareness. Yeah. I mean, I, that's something you can say to your wife when um you've written something she doesn't like <laughs> well, well she, she just gets onto the computer and deletes it if there's something yeah <laughs> that makes sense uh, it's so. i'll uh, i'll let you off but i've got one last question my last question for you last time was um what do you think the future of Dumfries and galloway is um because obviously you're very committed to the area and since that question was last asked to you so much has happened in the world so I'm wondering, in light of COVID, has has your perception of Dumfries and Galloway changed? I'm guessing you love it even more. Even more because I think when we were um, when we were in lockdown, there was so much that we could do. Um, you know, go swimming, and the, the first lockdown, the weather was so great. We were at the beach every day. Um, and even within our like zone that we were allowed to travel in, there was just tons to do. Um, and yeah, you know, we've got a big garden, so we just had a really great time. And it sort of made me really appreciate the fact that what we have on our our doorstep is absolutely amazing. Um, and I think the other thing that's happened is um, when the lockdowns were lifted but international travel was still more or less forbidden. Everyone who is, uh, I mean, normally our demographic for our tourists, as you probably know, is um, the north of England and the central belts of Scotland. That's where most of the people, our visitors come from. But this year they were coming from the south of England, Devon and Cornwall, everywhere, because they couldn't go anywhere else. Um, and Devon and Cornwall were packed, uh, and the Lake District was packed. So, you know, people made the effort to drive the extra couple of hours and come to Galloway. And I think it's been for the tourist industry of this area, it, the whole the last two years has been crap when it's been in lockdown. But when it's been out of lockdown, every self catering property, every B and B everywhere has been packed we've had the busiest summer in the shop than that we've ever had um in 20 years it's been absolutely heaving uh so uh, i kind of i quite like the the fact that international travel is off yeah. limits apart from the obvious environmental impact of people not being allowed to fly um or discouraged from flying it's really made people look at what they've got on their doorstep and you know hopefully people will come back well it's, it's like Dumfries and Galloway's finally got the uh, recognition it deserves it feels like that but it also feels like will it be a kind of blink of an eye thing and next year it'll all be will be forgotten again um mm -hmm. so it's yeah I don't know, it's a slightly two-edged sword because in a way what part of the charm of this area is that it's so quiet, that there just aren't people about. Um, and then suddenly this year there were, which was great economically. Um, but I suppose actually even when, the, when it's busy, it still feels empty because it's so vast. Um, 
and so uh, so uh, there's a, there's a brilliant graph I found. Um, I, was, I can't remember why I was looking into it, but I was I, I was interested in population densities, um, and I found a, a graph that plotted the population density, average population density over the UK over the last 200 years, I think, when the first census began. Um, and I think in, the, I think it was right, I won't get this absolutely right, but it was something like the average population density of the UK 200 years ago was two people per hectare. Mm -hmm. um, and now the average population density in the UK is six people per hectare. But if you look at Dumfries and Galloway, or particularly Galloway, um, it's still two people per hectare. So yeah. <laughs> it hasn't, you know, it hasn't really changed. Um, well, everything is... that you, also apologies. I was just going to say everything that you loved to, uh, about this place as an adult was what made me desperate to leave as a young adult. Um, yeah, but I was, um, uh, yeah, I suppose I was away um, at school, at boarding school, and so I kind of craved come the, the when you're taken away from home essentially at the age of seven you really desperately want to come back um and i i know so many people particularly kind of young intelligent people leave this area uh, and i can understand why because if you've never if this is where you've grown up and you haven't really had other particularly different life experiences the, it's a big world out there. It's exciting. Um, you know, I can understand why people do want to leave and want to experience other things. And I, you know, to some degree, I was the same. Um, yeah. And I went to university in Dublin, and then I lived in Bristol. And um, you know, I've had, but I've always this place has always been had a kind of like a rubber band around my ankle that's always pulled me back. Um, so, so where are you now? Are you in London? Uh, no, I just came back from London. I'm in. This is Moffat. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. My dad lives in Moffat. Okay. Um, but I'm. I, I know that I will um, be someone who lives in like Edinburgh long term. So I, I like the idea of being a, a a drive away from my parents, so that I I am in reach, but not around the. Well, corner. I liked I liked that as well. I thought I th actually not even a drive. I thought a phone call was. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> probably what I would have chosen um but uh it's not my parents really that's the, the draw so have you always lived in Moffat or are you no I'm Newton Stewart so I've, I've done oh, a, right. I've done a lot of Dumfries and Galloway because born in Dumfries now then Newton Stewart now Moffat so I'm familiar with the area I do like it I just um I'm I think some people I think young people are like cities yeah oh definitely I mean that was for me when I was yeah, when I left university, that's what I wanted. Where I wanted to be, I wanted to be. I wanted to go to Bristol because I I knew knew it slightly, but I knew it was a cool place to be, and I loved it. Um, and then wait till you hit thirty and see what you feel then. Well, that's it. I'm I already feel I'm now twenty six and I feel like I'm I'm slowing down, which is what I feared yeah. the most when I was twenty. This idea that I would be someone who would actually appreciate Dumfries and Galloway, but it's slowly happening. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, hopefully you will. I mean, think the thing I love about this end of the region is um, that you've got the hills and the sea, and even if you don't go swimming or fishing or hill walking, they're there, and it's it's like two different worlds, just w one behind your back and one in front of you, depending on which way you're you're turning, um, mm. and I. For me, that's I like the the kind of the broad horizon of the sea and the sense of like it's sort of almost like a sense of infinity, and then the mountains just give you a, a kind of I suppose it's I don't know quite what it is, but it's a it's a, just a different landscape, um, mm -hmm. and so uh, just on your doorstep, if, I mean I feel like Moffat, I can I mean it's a beautiful place. But it feels a bit landlocked. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. Uh, it's, you know, okay, it's probably only half an hour from the sea, but uh, you know, I like 
to be able to walk down to the sea. And... Yeah, you couldn't be closer. You no. Just, the um, short walk. Newton's what was it taking four, four or five minutes? Maybe, maybe ten walk, minutes. Yeah, well, down to the harbour, but the harbour's just kind of estuary, but it's still the sea. Um, mm. And then, you know, Newton Stewart, you, it's only five minutes drive and you're at another 20 minutes and you're at Glentrool and you're up in the hills. So The other thing I like about um, Dumfries and Galloway is it, I was very focused on the gossipy aspect when I was a teenager. But now as a young adult, something I really see as someone who's lived in cities is just um, how good, how, how special it is to have, get to grow up in a community. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's uh, that's something that I really like, um, and you, you either like it or you hate it. Which is, you know, crossing from the shop, walking from the shop to the post office to do the orders every day. It's can take twenty minutes because you just every, you yeah. bump into everyone, and I think, yeah, I think there is something really. Um, it's a connected community and not everybody likes each other but to be honest on the whole people do people you kind do of get... end up having to yeah yeah you've got no choice um i remember uh when i worked in the, the steam packet in the isle of whistle and the previous well the guy who has just died actually sadly um john schooler the owner told me a story about uh, how there were two locals in the in the sort of lounge bar, the public bar, um, and one of them had shagged the other one's wife or something, and um, and they went outside and had a fight. And uh, John said the next day they were sitting at the bar together having a laugh, <laughs> patting each other on the back. And he said, it's what you've got to do to survive. That's how local <laughs> communities work. You know, you can't hold grudges. You can't be difficult. You can't. <laughs> you, you just have to rub along and that's yeah that's it. and it's like in in london if you hijack someone's car um you'll never see them again whereas like crime and stuff in dumfries and galloway is just discouraged because it would kill you uh, well, you'd, you'd every, ruin your reputation yeah. forever. everybody knows who's done everything um so you know it there's no point. I mean, there was, unless it's people who come in specifically to do, to commit a crime, um, which does occasionally happen. But yeah, I mean, my parents' car, um, it was in the garage. This is when I was, must have been about 15, um, getting an MOT or a service or something. And the guy who owns the garage never used to lock the the cars he was working on at night, he just put the key above the, um, the you know, the blind that comes down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he'd just shove it in there uh, at night. And anyway, um, <laughs> one day, my parents, so the, my parents' car was getting an MOT or whatever, uh, and they went to pick it up, and what had happened? Someone had reported it being seen driven about two miles away. Um, anyway, my dad went to pick it up and he found like somebody's homework. All right. Uh, and the guy had parked it. He, he basically wanted to impress this girl. So he knew that the key would be above the, the visor thing. Um, so he, teenage boy went in, got the key, got the girl, started the car, drove like two miles neatly parked it exactly where it had been before um but while he was doing it his homework fell out of his pocket um so they knew immediately who it was uh and of course like the guy who owns the garage willie barkley just had a word with the guy's mum and said look tell him not to do it again <laughs> and that's it you know it, what a just, wholesome crime yeah. <laughs> so, yeah he's he's gonna go on to be like an international cartel for sure <laughs> no, I think yeah, exactly. He's, he's He'll be fine. Working for the garage now. I think. Um, right, yeah. hey, I better go. Yeah, of course. I was just going to say, um, I really appreciate uh, you talking to me, and uh, I can't wait to interview you in another three years. <laughs> God, <laughs> hopefully my next book will actually get published. It's not great at the moment, but we'll see. I have to do some work on it. Yeah, I can't wait to catch up 
Um, yeah, well, come in I and really say hi. Them. Okay, no problem. It's lovely to see you. Thank you. Okay, see you soon.